and I have the great privilege of working with a whole bunch of churches in Hillsboro that are partnering with Habitat um, and are friends with Habitat and are friends with our neighborhoods. Um, and so we have uh, Dewey Williams and Cameron Merrill. Uh, Dewey is at uh, Mount Bright Baptist Church and Cameron is at Hillsboro United Methodist Church. And um, uh, gentlemen, pastors, I, uh, I just have a couple questions. I wanna, I wanna hear from you guys. What are you guys seeing in the community um, in the midst of this pandemic? Uh, from your congregations and your community's perspective, especially in Hillsborough? So the impact on the community, um, I think mainly is people are in this stay at home mode. And I think most people are complying with that. You know, uh, some people are going out, I think, for walks and for needed trips to the store, you know, the, um, mm -hmm those essential things. But I think for the most part, people are staying at home and when they do go out, they are uh, trying to keep distance from other people. That's Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I agree with Dewey as far as the immediate impact. I mean, I think the first couple of weeks for our, for our congregation, um, it felt like uh, a sprint, right? Everybody was kind of, especially the first couple of weeks of, of uh, schools being closed. When, when I feel like is when everyone kind of realized that this was um, dramatically changing our pattern of life really quickly. Um, everyone sort of reacted to it kind of in a sprint. Uh, we had a lot of people quickly reach out to, uh, to us, to me and some of our other key leaders about, you know, kind of restarting phone tree practices and things like that pretty quickly to make sure that the most vulnerable people in our congregation didn't feel like they had to go out um, and we you know we, we have a few um, we don't have we didn't have a lot of truly homebound members before but we definitely have a fair number of people who would who would be wise to to be staying at home even before the stay at home sheltered home orders came out um, so we did that very quickly um, any uh, any thoughts or comments on how you guys feel that sort of journey towards Easter has been um, for for your congregations and so there's been a you know like i said that sprint initially was like oh how do we how do we normalize this as quickly as possible um and i think the the real challenge has been as lent moved even further to holy week is how do we how do we not let ourselves normalize how do we how do we let the awkwardness continue and you know that the kind of the the true reality of Holy Week and Easter that we don't really talk about is that Easter is actually a story about absence, right? It's a story about uh, an empty tomb. It's a story about uh, uh, people going on the road and someone else disappearing uh, from beside them. Uh, you know, it's, it's a story of all these moments of absence that concludes with Jesus leaving them, right? And so um, I, I kind of wonder if maybe for the first time in a very long time, if we're not actually being given the gift of celebrating a, an aspect of Easter that we haven't been able to really properly celebrate in a long time. I, I know that like for me personally and pastorally, every year Easter feels a little bit underwhelming um, by the time the Sunday is over. And I, I, I kind of am suspicious of the fact that I think one of the reasons it's left me that way for many years now has been because there's a whole component of Easter's story that we're just not hearing, that I've not been able to, to sit with, which is, you know, these women showing up at a tomb that is empty mm -hmm. and um, in the darkness, you know, feeling a presence only through absence make this what we didn't want to do is take holy week and the experience of lent into holy week and into easter and just try to make it port into a virtual space right um, we really wanted to say okay what what is this time doing to us and how do we how do we prepare for that and um, it's made me really conscious too already of on the other side of this that it's going to be really difficult for people to gather back together like it we're going to experience some kind of we're going to experience a fair amount of lingering communal trauma uh, around what it's like to um one of my friends the other day she said that she was watching a show on netflix or something and people were touching like they were shaking hands and hugging and she's like i had like a visceral reaction you know of like please stop doing that i've been advocating for decades that we knew we need to do things differently <laughs> we need a different method, a different technique, a different mindset yeah. to approach yeah. church. And, and 
all of a sudden <laughs> we have to. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have to. And and I and I think for the 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 black church, this is perhaps even a bigger struggle because there is mm. a lot of moving toward you know uh, being formal, moving toward being uh, caught in our rigid methods and uh mm. and and from the way we dress to the way that we uh, exercise uh, the ordinances the way that we fellowship yeah. the way that we communicate with one another what we call yeah. one another it's very formal mm. in the black church and that was because mm. the black church years and years and years ago wanted to be seen as legitimate and so there was right. this overemphasis on the way we dressed dressing in church right. clothes and and the way we performed the lord's supper and all of it was very very formal and so now people are in their at in their homes nobody's dressed mm -hmm. up in their homes <laughs> no wow. no you know nobody's wearing their sunday go to church i'm in my pajamas I'm in my pajamas down here. I just can't. I just can't see. I mean, I got this nice, this nice fancy T-shirt going. Do me. Don't let that fool you. And so there's this adjustment. And I, you know, I've been talking about this for the last couple of years. I've been in Mount Bright that we need to come out of some of this formality that we're caught in. Mm, and wow. There's no biblical justification for it, and and so all of a sudden, bang. There it is. You know, right. here we here are. Is. People yeah. sitting at home with their feet up on on uh, uh, on the sofa, uh, watching <laughs> the preacher. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and so you can't get any more casual than that. You know, there we do have. You know, we're deeply in involved with OCIM, and so uh, you know we're working on how can we be supportive of OCIM. We also are involved with this called the uh, New Home in Durham Baptist Association. And uh, they once a month have a food bank and it, April happens to be our month to man the food bank. But mm. you know, I told them I'm not gonna send my members out, um, you know, to, to you know, be hands on with people putting these baskets together and then giving them out. And so we're working on how do we do, how do we be uh, people of faith, helping those that are in need, and at the same time maintaining our safety and, and distance from people. So, and so, I mean, for me, the, the difference is there's a challenge in the way that we, that we gather. There's a challenge mm -hmm. in the way that we fellowship with each other. And, uh, and so I'm just, I'm, <clears throat> I'm just excited about it. And, and that's been my message every week that we've been online, that this is an exciting time to be the church. And we can cower in our corners and say, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? Or we can just lift our heads up and say, Lord, help us see what to do. And so that's been my tone in worship is that wow. I'm excited to be a preacher right now. This is new and fresh and my goodness, you know, uh, the preachers of old, Peter didn't get to preach in these conditions. And here I am, I'm a preacher in this condition and, and mm -hmm. I got to figure it out. Peter had to fill it out on the, figure it out on the day of Pentecost. I got to figure it out today <laughs> in the day of COVID-19. I mean, yeah, we have, we, you know, we've moved to worships online. Um, it's been a gift. We've, we've, joined in with the Methodist churches in the, in the Northern Orange area. Um, so six congregations worshiping together um, every week for the past few weeks, which has been helpful in a lot of ways. Um, it's been a really rich kind of, again, we've been figure we've, we've been talking for two years now about how we were going to try to bring this parish of Methodist mm -hmm. churches together. And magically now we've got the chance to do that. It's kind of handed to us. So that's worked out mm -hmm. very well. Um, Prayer, I, th I think two things that have kind of kind of risen up for our congregation in ways that um, they've just never experienced in their, in their past. Um, Robert Fruworth, uh, Episcopal Rector, and I have started a joint Thursday uh, conversation with uh, Julian of Norwich. Um, he is a, an expert and a longtime 
a lover of her uh, of her work and uh, my congregation we, we didn't have as many people as the Episcopalians but that's not to be surprising in the sense that my, my congregation has very little experience and exposure to contemplative practice um, so this is uh, a great chance to, to kind of invigorate some of that. And I've really kind of told everyone, you know, she's, she's the voice for a pandemic. Um, she has these visions of Christ in the middle of the Black Plague, for the love of God. Um, so, you know, I think that's starting to kind of rise up for people. Uh, I think now um, people are starting to think about and they're starting to see the impact of prolonged um, social distancing effects on our economy, on our communities, on our neighborhoods. And um, you know, we were intimately involved with kind of with Food for All and with OCIM are our two biggest spaces of outreach in our community right now. And um, so we're figuring out kind of with like same, same as Dewey, how do we continue to support OCIM knowing that they're a huge supporter of food, especially in our community. Um, food for All, we, we are continuing to prepare meals. We've had people take on the, the task of, you know, preparing those in a way that's safe and manageable while also recognizing that our schools have told people that they can go get meals at Food for All. Uh, so the, the kind of expecting to start to see that increase um, where it hasn't been much more than about 20, you know, two dozen meals uh, at a time, we're expecting that to start to increase pretty soon. So how do we prepare for that? Well, th this has been fantastic. Uh, I appreciate you both very much. I appreciate both of your leadership uh, in Hillsborough and I know you guys in your congregations, you have a whole bunch of people who do love Hillsboro. Um, and the uh, and as Habitat is, you know, working to build hounds in Hillsboro and to be uh, an effective presence in Hillsboro, along with all these other great organizations um, that you guys have both mentioned. Um, we are so glad for your friendship, your congregation's friendship and your partnership in, in our work. Um, and this has been really great for me. Um, I think you can insert a joke here, a Presbyterian, a Baptist, and a Methodist walk into a Zoom call. Um, <laughs> but, but as it is, a whole bunch of great things uh, come out of that punchline. So we will uh, talk soon. All right, great. God bless. Good to God see you both. You.